Hello everyone, this video is for absolute beginners, people who are just starting out their journey with DaVinci Resolve. And first, I want to show you how you can download the latest basic version of DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 18.5 for free. And then I'll also share with you how you can actually get the studio version of DaVinci Resolve for free. I think that this information might be helpful for some of you. And then I will walk you through all pages in DaVinci Resolve so you can learn how to get started. I hope you'll find this video helpful. Let's start. In order to download DaVinci Resolve, go to the Blackmagic website. The link to it is also below this video. Then scroll down and click on DaVinci Resolve 18.5 free download. Then let's scroll down again and let's click on the button that says free download now. And if you don't know it yet, DaVinci Resolve comes in two different versions, public and studio. The public version is completely free and it's fully enough for someone who's just starting out with DaVinci Resolve. And DaVinci Resolve Studio features a lot more advanced tools like tracking, beauty enhancement tools, AI features and many more, so it's perfect for someone a bit more experienced with Resolve and for someone who does video and sound editing or color grading on a professional level. And also, you can actually get the studio version of DaVinci Resolve for free when you buy one of the Blackmagic Design products like speed editors, color panels, audio consoles or cameras as they will all arrive to you with DaVinci Resolve Studio license. And in addition to it, if you become my channel member, you can also win the studio version of DaVinci Resolve because I organize giveaways on a regular basis. So if you are interested, hit the join button as the next giveaway will take place next week. But if you want to simply download the free public version of Resolve, you just have to choose which system you are working on and then you only have to fill in the form and you can download your public version of DaVinci Resolve 18.5 for free. Now let's move to the software and its interface as I want to walk you through it so we can launch DaVinci Resolve once it's installed on our computers. And the first window we'll see is the project manager where all of our projects will be saved. You can also import and export your projects from here if you want to, for example, send your projects to someone. So let's go down to the new project button and let's create a new project. And once the project is opened, we can see what pages we have available in DaVinci Resolve and we can easily switch between them. So we have a media page first, then the cut page, then the edit page, then fusion page, color page, fairlight page, and at the end, delivery page. Let's go to the media page then and let me show you how to use it. Also in this tutorial, I am not able to give you a thorough explanation of all pages and tools. I will just show you the basic functions of each page so you know how to navigate in Resolve and you feel more confident as a complete beginner. So the media page is where you can import, organize and manage your media files for your editing projects. Up here in the media storage, we can navigate to all folders on our computer or the external drive. And this is how we can search for the assets. Or we can simply right click on the empty space in the media pool and we can simply click import media and then we can search for the footage on our computer. Then when we import our media, this window asking if you want to change the project frame rate may pop up. And my default project frame rate is set to 24 frames per second. And I know that my clips were filmed 25 frames per second. So I'll hit change and my clips are now in the media pool. And there's a very important note in here as when we go here to the project settings in the bottom right corner over here, we can set here the timeline resolution to whatever we need and we can change it at any point, but the timeline frame rate has to be set correctly at the very beginning as as soon as you upload media to your timeline, your timeline frame rate settings gets locked in. Okay, so please do remember this if you want to avoid any problems. And now let's go back to our media pool and let's create a new bin to organize our footage a bit more. So I'll right click again and I'll create a new bin and I'll just call it footage. And now I can simply highlight all of my clips and move it to the bin. And also you are able to view all of your bins here in the viewer on the left. 
Now let's move to the cut page. And the cut page sometimes is very confusing for people. As you may have asked, why do we need the cut page if we have the edit page for the editing? So the answer to it is that the cut page has been tailored specifically for quick assembly and can help you to reduce the clutter very quickly. So here we have a simplified interface and some editing tools on the left. I will not go through all of them today, but there's one very cool feature in the cut page that I actually want to show you. So let's drop the footage onto our timeline very quickly. We can also do it by clicking the append button over here. And now we can easily scroll through all of the clips. And now the tool I want to show you is called Boring Detector and it helps to analyze and highlight clips on the timeline that may be too long. It can be really helpful when you, for example, edit Talking Heads videos and you want to quickly specify where should you put your B-roll clips. So let me show you how to use the Boring Detector as this tool is fully customizable. So let's go here to Timeline Options, then let's select Boring Detector. And now we can manually define the maximum length for shots before they are considered boring. So it all depends on you and your project. I will put three seconds here and let's hit analyze. And now the software has highlighted areas of the clips where the action is likely to be boring. So it's a sign for us to use a cut or cover it with a cutaway. The next page is the edit page. And this is where we do our editing. We add the sound, text, and so on. And as you can see, there's way more tools here than in the cut page. I will quickly show you what kind of tools we have in here. So we can stretch our timeline by holding the Option or Alt key and scrolling the mouse like this. Then here on the right upper corner, we have the Inspector tab where we can modify each individual clip. We can zoom it in and crop it. We can reposition it and so on. And then we can obviously manually move around our clips or use the trimming tools over here. So if you are using a different editing software before, you should be familiar with them. Now let's move on to the Fusion page. And the Fusion page is a very powerful page in Resolve that we use for visual effects, compositing and motion graphics. There's multiple tutorials on my channel showing how to use the Fusion page. So you are more than welcome to have a look at my YouTube. And I will also leave you some links to my Fusion tutorials below this video, as there's really too much information to fit into today's video. Our next page is the color page, and this is what I'm specialized in. We have a variety of color grading tools we can use to enhance our clips. The most basic are curves, then we can use to add more contrast to the clips, then the color wheels, RGB mixer, color warper, qualifier, power windows, and many, many more. So if you want to dig deeper into it, again, have a look at my videos from my color grading playlist. Then we have a Fairlight page and we use it for more advanced sound editing. This is not my expertise at all. So if you are interested in sound editing in Resolve, I would honestly recommend you to find other YouTube creators and trainers focusing specifically on sound editing. And the last page in Resolve is a delivery page. And this is where we deliver our finished edits from. I think this page is quite intuitive. You can obviously select which part of the video you want to export like this. And then here in the render settings, you can choose your file name, then the location, and then you can choose from all sorts of different formats and codecs you need for your particular project. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.